The Bible tells that John, the disciple of Jesus, had been imprisoned for preaching the gospel and was serving his sentence on the island of Patmos, in the region known at that time as Asia Minor, now the territory of Turkey. And it was there that he was taken by the Holy Spirit of God and received the vision he recounted in the book of Revelation. As we know, the last book of the Bible brings accounts of the end times, the return of Christ, the ultimate defeat of Satan, and the final judgment, where men and women will be judged by the Lord and learn their eternal destiny. But in this video, I will talk to you about chapter 13, which deals with the two beasts that arose during the Great Tribulation. It is likely that you are already familiar with these two beings, even those who are not Christians and know little about the scriptures. At some point, you may have heard about the beasts of Revelation, whether in a movie, book, or even stories told by older folks. But what few people know is that these two beasts are different figures. One is the beast that rose out of the sea, and the other is the beast that rose out of the earth. There is much confusion about their meaning. That's why I will show you who the two beasts of Revelation are, and what role each of them plays during the end times. For this, I will not rely on fictional movies or books, but rather on the Word of God. But before we begin, I want to ask you to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell so that you will be notified by YouTube whenever I post a new video. Alright, I don't know if you know this, but every day, I have been posting new messages of faith, hope, and praying for your life and your family. So come walk with me every day, and now, I want to show you what the Apostle John said in Revelation chapter 13 regarding the first beast. It is written as follows. I saw a beast coming out of the sea. It had ten horns and seven heads, with ten crowns on its horns, and on each head a blasphemous name. The beast I saw resembled a leopard, but had feet like those of a bear, and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power, and his throne, and great authority. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was filled with wonder and followed the beast. The symbol that most characterizes this beast is the horn, and in the Bible, horns, both real and symbolic, refer to power and authority, especially in relation to the end times. And this beast is the one mentioned by the prophet Daniel in the Old Testament. Let's see what he said. In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was a fourth beast, terrifying and frightening and very powerful. It had large iron teeth. It crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. It was different from all the former beasts, and it had ten horns. Scholars say that the first beast represents the Gentiles, that is those who do not have a Jewish origin, which is the people chosen by the Lord in the Old Testament, descendants of Abraham, but did not recognize Christ as the Son of God. Furthermore, John's vision regarding this creature, resembling a leopard with bear's feet and a lion's mouth, is entirely symbolic. The first beast will actually come into the world as a non-Jewish man, very powerful and influential, capable of convincing a multitude of people with just a speech. This is because this beast will come with great power and authority from the dragon, that is, Satan. This first beast is the Antichrist. The Bible says that his wisdom and charisma will conquer all and make him the most admirable and beloved person among all inhabitants of the planet. All of this will make him the most remarkable and important man of all times, and after gaining the trust of everyone and becoming the leader over all nations of the earth, the first beast will reveal his true nature, and all the euphoria in the face of this powerful being will turn into pain and distress. He will blaspheme against the name of God and persecute and kill his saints. In the end, like all the works of Satan, happiness will turn into weeping. And soon after, from verse 11 of chapter 13, the Apostle John begins to make reports about the second beast. Let's together follow how his vision unfolds. Then I saw a second beast coming out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. And it performed great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of the people. Notice that the second beast will also have great authority and perform miracles in the name of the first beast, just like the Antichrist. 
This figure will also come in the form of a man, and the Bible calls it the false prophet. However, there is a difference between them. The second beast will come from among the people of Israel and will likely be a great religious leader who will deceive many of his own people, leading the crowds to idolize the first beast. Moreover, he will also perform impressive feats, such as resurrecting the dead and making an image speak. Another action that the second beast will take is to force everyone to receive a mark on their right hand or forehead. This mark, represented by the number 666, will be necessary for people to buy or sell, and without it, commercial transactions will not be possible. In chapter 19 of Revelation, the Apostle John narrates that Jesus will return in glory and power to wage war against evil and will send these two figures to hell. Let's see what is written. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to wage war against the rider on the horse and his army. But the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet who had performed the signs on its behalf. With these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. If we analyze the gospel, we will see that the end times will be marked by deception. Jesus warned that before the rise of the Antichrist and the false prophet, many would come claiming to be great men of God to seduce and deceive people. That is why Christ said, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. Jesus made it clear that these false prophets will also perform great signs and wonders and many who claim to be religious and God-fearing will end up being deceived by them during the last days. That is because these false prophets are not easy to identify. They do not come with horns on their foreheads, but rather like Jesus, performing wonders, miracles, and showing love to people. However, this will all be a great trap that could cost the salvation of many people. This shows that both the false Christs and the two beasts described in Revelation are under the dominion of Satan himself, who is the king of deception. His aim in the end times will be to frustrate God's plans, but he will never succeed. Amen. Therefore, my dear brother and sister, if you know the word of God and have your eyes fixed on Jesus, there is no reason to be afraid, because Jesus will take care of you and protect you. I know that many people are afraid of the book of Revelation because they read it out of context and without understanding that much of John's accounts are symbolic. In other words, there will not be monsters with multiple heads and horns spewing fire all over the world, but rather human figures who have received powers from the devil to dominate the world and do evil to humanity. Therefore, we who love the Lord and serve Him with all our hearts do not have to view the events of the last days as something tragic or frightening, but rather as the time when Jesus will return and defeat the enemy once and for all. Then, all of us who are with Christ will live days of peace and joy forever. Amen. This is the greatest promise we can receive. So remember, my brother, Jesus does not lose. In the last chapter of Revelation, He reigns victorious and we can rejoice in the Lord's victory. Hallelujah. If you like this message, share it with your friends and family and subscribe here to my channel. God bless you 